everyone Oli here and this is my review of The Ambassadors of Death, the third story of the seventh season of classic Doctor Who starring John Pertwee as the third Doctor. The Ambassadors of Death is the 53rd story overall, it's seven episodes long and is written by David Whittaker, but on the DVD it's written by, it says it's written by David Whittaker, Malcolm Hawke and Trevor Ray. I think it was due to the fact that, that Whittaker was upset with some of the creative decisions, but they still kept his name on the credits. So the story, the plot of the story is as follows. Something has gone seriously wrong with Mars Probe 7. With no contact from the astronauts since the rocket started its return journey from Mars, Space Control is now extremely worried about the fate of the crew. A rescue mission recovers something, but whatever it is, it certainly isn't human. To find out what has happened to the astronauts, the doctor must head out, head out into space without the TARDIS. This is as if, in my opinion, it's a very good story, but I would say... At the same time, it's definitely the weakest story of season 7, even though season 7 is a stellar season and probably one of the best, if not the best, season of classic Doctor Who, but I would say Ambassador of Death is probably like one of the stories that actually holds it back in my eyes. The production of the story is very well done to say the least, the sets were pretty cool, the script was great, especially the dialogue as well. Part of the story had to be recolored by hand because I think the master color tape was actually wiped so they had to we restored the color using chroma dot, I think. Yeah, and you can even tell like if you watch the DVD, you can tell some because it definitely has been recolored. And I think some black and white versions of this story actually exist online. But the recoloring is a bit messy, but it go it does it does give off that appeal to the story because especially when the doctor does find the astronauts in the Mars Probe Seven, the effect looks really trippy, and it was pretty cool. The direction by Michael Ferguson was decent. I like it a bit in episode one of one of the astronauts was coming out of the probe itself and then with that pacing sound I think it had to do with the alien to just had and it was expanding to different characters there such as the astronaut, the brigadier, I think Cornish as well. Yeah, that was a pretty cool shot. I like the visuals of this story and it's, and for the first time ever we actually hear the Doctor Who sting that we usually hear at the end of the story for the first time but I think they did it a bit differently here for the first time because after the title sequence they replaced the cliffhanger and then when that cliffhanger ends they just play the scream and the, the, the sting and then they do the message of death written by what, David Whittaker episode whatever it was pretty cool and it was and like, it was very great it was great to hear it and I like some of the model shots that were used, especially like the Mars Probe 7 ships and and the Mars Probe 7 prop itself was very nice to look at. I like the um, uh, the alien ambassador's make makeup though, especially the blue face it was pretty cool and it was very trippy to say the least and it definitely gave gave them look gave them the alien look. The music of the story I really liked as well and I would say that this piece of music is my favourite of season seven because it is actually on YouTube it's very good to hear and when I remember I'm studying or doing whatever I usually play it play it in the background and it's very it's very entertaining to listen to the battle scene between units and those goons in the warehouse I think it was yeah I think I forgot it is I think I'll get to it later and I think the adult scene was actually well choreographed especially the death scene that I think if this episode was actually missing because it actually showed up on one of the Australian sensor clips so it was pretty it was a pretty cool scene to say the least the plot of the story was really good as well I do feel they did use a bit, a bit of padding to like stretch out the story to make it seven parts but I did like the twist of the story having instead of having the title the ambassadors of death being alien being the enemies the actual enemies were were humans four of them actually and especially Gerald Carrington he was the big bad of the whole thing but it was definitely a good change I mean, as opposed to thinking that the ambassadors are actually the evil ones and it was pretty cool as well and the ambassadors were actually sent to Earth in exchange for the humans because the ambassadors are actually captured by the humans and then well the, well the alien ambassadors are actually captured by the humans and in return the aliens took the astronauts from Mars Probe 7 and then when the doctor went up there he, he, went, he saw the aliens and was like as long as you return the ambassadors then we can return the humans to Earth because the aliens are exactly bad guys they just even the ambassadors, they even though they were killing people, but they didn't actually know they were because 
I think because it had mass radiation and it was very lethal to the humans, and that's how they were called the ambassadors of death because they didn't even know. So it was just it was basically unintentional on their side. This story also had some very great moments and some great cliffhangers as well, especially the episode two cliffhanger when the Doctor, Liz, Cornish, and other characters. I think the Brigadier was there. And he confronted the Mars Probe Seven. Seven ship and he even would assume that the ambassadors, well, the astronauts are still inside, and the doctors on radio trying to like, trying to get them to like come out of the ship, and then they were just saying we're not clear for re-entry. Like, they were saying it several times, and the doctor said not to open it before, but then, even though the doctor was trying to get to talk to them, asking them questions such as how many freeze make five or something like that, and then, the doctor was like, right, cut it open, and that's how the episode just ends. It was a rather memorable moment for me, to say the least. Now, on to the acting of the story. I say it was very well done by the cast, and they all did, did a pretty good job. Especially John Pertwee. I think he did a great job here, and... And I definitely think he's settled into the role as a doctor very well, and... That's one of the reasons why I actually enjoy him, because he quickly adapts. So that's, that's the actor who he is, and his doctor is very different to Hartnell and Charlton, as I mentioned before. And I really liked how he's not really quarreling with the Brigadier anymore because the Brigadier killed the Silurians in the previous story and they were able to put the differences aside. I think they made they made up off screen <laughs> to try and defeat Carrington and save the astronauts or the Mars Probe 7. Liz Shaw, she was great in the story, even though she does get captured halfway through the story by Carrington's men and she had to work with Dr. Lennox for the remainder, but she was still cool. She did have some cool moments, and I re- I liked the scene. In, I think it was episode three, the episode three's cliffhanger when she was trying to get away from Carrington's men or one of the other guys. But then she ended up getting. Even I think she even outran. She went. She was running the bloody rugby pitch with with Booten and the very stupid looking hat. <laughs> she was able to outrun them. But I think when she got to like one of those a pair or something like that. But then I think. She was able to throw one of the guys overboard, but then she's actually flipped over to the other side, and that's how it ends. I probably say that's actually one of my favorite cliffhangers ever, and it is one of my favorite scenes of this story. The Brigadier that he was all right. He doesn't actually. I don't remember him doing a whole lot, but Nicholas Courtney did well for for what he was given, and it's nice to see him and the Doctor in the same side again after the whole quarrel over what happened in Doctor Who and the Silurians. In addition, we also get to see Sergeant Benton return. Yay! We don't actually see him until episode four, or f- either episode four or five, and I don't know why he didn't come. Maybe he was contacted late or something like that. But it's definitely good to see Benton again because he's actually my favorite of the unit family. Well, pretty much of everybody, aside from the Brigadier and the Doctor and his companion, also. But he doesn't actually do a whole lot. But I still, it's still nice to see Benton. So now onto the side characters of the story. First off, we had Ralph Cornish. He was the director of the space program, British space program. I liked his character considering the fact he actually wasn't the evil one and does actually live to tell the tale. <laughs> and he was able to help the Doctor defeat General Carrington and Carrington's plans for starting war between the humans and the aliens because of the alien ambassadors. We also had Van Leiden. He was one of the astronauts on the Mars Probe Seven ship. He was eventually he was captured by the aliens, but he was later freed by them after Carrington was dealt with. And we also had General Doc, Dr. Lennox. He had to work for Carrington alongside Liz because he was actually a disgraced Cambridge professor. And I think he even recognized Liz because she was in Cambridge as well. But Carrington actually tried to escape and tried to try to turn himself over to Unit, but he was later caught. But Carrington killed him by giving him some radiation isotopes and that in his food and that pretty much just ended the guy's life there were other side characters but they were fairly minor or the others were just villains but these lot were fairly decent characters to say the least least <clears throat> so now on to the villains of the story we had quite a few and they were all human not the so-called ambassadors of death we first off we had general carrington He's pretty much the big bad of the whole story because, because his motives were because he was on the previous Mars Probe, Mars Probe Six, and he was with his buddy partner, or whatever. And then, I think they met the same aliens, but then the aliens actually killed his partner, 
Well, obviously, it wasn't intentional because they didn't know that it was lethal to humans. But I don't think Carrington actually saw that and was using Mars Probe 7 to see what was going on and try to at least create another war. I think he was working with another general as well, but obviously the general, another person as well in government, I think. And that person actually wanted to have first contact with the aliens, but then that's what Carrington was actually using him to, to try and get to the aliens. And, but he was a good villain. He's played by John Arbonneri. He was... Van Lofton's and Fury from the Deep a few seasons ago. So we actually do get to see John Albanieri in a few more in a couple more Doctor Who stories. So that's good and he was Albanieri portrayed him very well. We also had Bruno Tartalian. He worked with Cornish at Space Control, but he was actually working for Carrington. And he was a very dodgy character. I think the episode one cliff and he actually held a gun to the Doctor and Liz and held them hostage. But then he actually got bits of sp- he was doing some other dodgy stuff as well, but then the doctor tried to report his suspicions, but then I think Tauchan actually got a briefcase bomb and to use to kill the doctor, but then it backfired and ended up killing Tartalian instead and the doctor left away left that place unscathed. We also had Collins and he was a sergeant under Carrington's command. He doesn't really do much because the guy was actually captured in episode one him by units and then he was actually interrogated as well but we don't really see him for the remainder of that story until Carrington actually frees him when he takes control of the space con- takes over the space control and finally we had Collinson no 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 yeah, sorry not Collinson we had Regan yeah that's his name Regan he was uh I think he was also I think he was also sent his men also actually captured Liz as well and he was a criminal that was hired by General Carrington to capture the aliens, but Regan actually wanted the aliens for himself for his own deeds, and Carrington didn't actually like that. But Unit actually caught the guy, and then he didn't want to cooperate. But he did does actually end up cooperating with Unit, so for his own reasons, because he doesn't, so he can thinks he can get off lightly with Unit, and hopes for a less less than severe sentence. So then we get on to why the thoughts of the ambassadors of death. I do the reason why I do think it's a weak story is because it really shouldn't have been a seven it really should have been seven episodes long and it I mean it's a very strong plot to say the least though they had some good moments but in two hours there was a lot of padding and I think there was a lot of plots that were really unneeded and it does pretty much take away from that story. It pretty much take away from the story itself and it just made things like very confusing to try and follow. I mean I like it. I still think it's a very good story but it's not that great if you know what I mean. It could have been a lot better. I mean, if it was like a five part or something, then yeah, I would have probably been one of Pertwee's best. But I did think there was some unneeded parts. And I think Liz was with Carrington, under Carrington control for far too long. I think she could have been at least freed at some point later on in the story. Well, early on in the story, to say the least. And. Yeah, so basically The Ambassadors of Death is unfortunately one of those stories that have brilliant plots but the the episode the story length actually ruins it. But to be honest, there are some other aspects that actually make up for this story's greatness, such as the cliffhangers and the Doctor Who's thing to say the least. And yeah, so The Ambassadors of Death gets an eight out of ten. When I watched it back in September well, September last year I gave it a seven, but I watched it over the summer and I gave it an eight give it an 8. So my next review will be the season 7 finale and the unintended final appearance of Liz Shaw and that story is Inferno and that is one of my very good friend's favourite, well, his favourite story ever. I'll give him a shout out in the next story, in the next review. So thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts of this story and this review. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so or if you haven't done so already. Until then, See you later.